you have to have some degree of hubris when you're entering into a scientific field and say, I'm going to study how to cure HIV or cure heart disease or cure Alzheimer's. But scientists are at the core idealists and optimists. My name is Judd Holtquist and I'm an HIV research scientist at the University of California, San Francisco and the Gladstone Institutes. And learning to become a research scientist is learning how to cope with failure, learning to take it not as a personal failure but as a learning experience. It's fairly rare that you can stand up from your desk and say, Eureka, but those moments every once in a while do occur. Every day you need to come in and face the challenges with uh, an open mind and a positive attitude. The basics of our job is discovery. What we try to figure out is how HIV is replicating within the human body and figure out if there's any way that we can prevent that process from occurring. HIV research is particularly important to me as an LGBTQ individual. It was only about two years ago that one of my absolute dearest friends seroconverted, or they found out that they were HIV positive. It's a shocking moment. Once I learned about the struggles that my friends were going through with infection, once I came out as gay, once I moved to San Francisco and was part of the LGBT community here, all of these events bring you closer and closer to the epidemic and what you're studying and what you're trying to accomplish. It brings you closer to the people for whom your discoveries could actually mean positive change in their day-to-day -day life. It's humbling and challenging at the same time. The current treatments for HIV infection are daily doses of a cocktail of antiretroviral drugs. Needing to take a daily dose of a pill that is expensive and susceptible to resistance means that for hard to treat communities, poorer communities or communities that may have trouble sticking to a standard regimen, it means it's not enough. It requires daily monitoring of someone for the rest of their life, which is not feasible when we're talking about an infection of 37 million people worldwide. No one thinks of the cure as a magical pill that someday will arise and suddenly the virus is gone. The cure is actually going to require a holistic set of events and a lot of collaboration between basic research scientists, public health experts, politicians and communities to come together to approach this problem from many different angles at the same time. For me, curing the virus means suppressing it long term without the need of further intervention. While there may never be a day where the virus is no longer part of your body, I certainly believe that we will reach a point at which someone who is infected will no longer need to think about it in any day-to-day -day activities. The progress that we have had to date has been, in a lot of ways, extraordinary. But I will never be content with it until we have a cure. As research scientists, we come in every single day, and oftentimes we fail. But what keeps us going day after day is an optimism that by coming in and doing the absolute best we can, one day we will be able to arrive at a cure. And this is a challenge that I think everybody who's associated with the virus faces. People living with HIV need to wake up every day and face sobering facts. And only through hope and optimism uh, will we be able to get through it together.